everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're going to take a look at all the menus in the config system for Logbook for Old Men 2. Now, there are a ton of settings for Logbook for Old Men, and there are just a ton of different ways you can configure it to do the things that you want to do. I believe in the KISS system, keep it simple and standard. The less that you change, the easier it's going to be to duplicate when you do it on another PC or another platform. Anyway, with that, oh, before I forget, if you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button. And if you like my videos, click the like buttons on the ones that you like. Uh, with that, let's get started. Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration settings for Log for Old Men 2. I'm going to go ahead and open up the main configuration, and where I sit is at the user configuration. Now, a lot of people are unaware, but I can create a new configuration in here as well and name it, and then I can create a separate link on the desktop to it. So um, let's say I want a configuration for my daily logging that does all sorts of automatic uploads and stuff like that. Uh, I can call that my daily or main or whatever. And then I can create a second complete user configuration and that could have all of the auto uploads turned off. So for, uh, let's say I was using that configuration for a net or something like that, I could just give it the name, uh, you know, description uh, net this or this net, and then save it and create a uh, 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 launcher on the desktop that would automatically launch that particular setup. And that's not just, by the way, one or two configuration settings that's the entire configuration call sign everything uh even the log it points towards so uh very very handy tool uh also i can duplicate or clone the current configuration and that way i can start with all the work that i've done and then just back out the things i need to turn off or change those little knobs that i need to twist for a different configuration so, if I go all the way up to program settings, these are the settings that are going to drive you nuts, okay? Uh, perfect example. This is where you can change your distance units between miles and kilometers. I prefer mine on miles. Uh, what the internet connection status is, and I just leave mine on automatic uh, because it doesn't have to actually go and attach to the uh, internet, and I don't have to tell it it's attached to the internet. Um, I do not want public beta updates, but I do want it to check for regular updates of the stable release. And uh, I do send statistics, okay, and I send statistics on the um, operation of the program so the developers, if uh, they're seeing a lot of errors in the program, can correct it. Uh, it gives them some insight into what's going on with the software. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at edit program config. You probably never want to be in here because I can reset everything in the program. I can reset the whole program back to factory settings to where it comes up and asks you for all the data again. So again, you probably don't want to be in here, but it's a good thing to know what's there if you're having a problem. This is the program scheduler, and this is really cool because this is actually, uh, this is what Logbook for Old Men does in the background and how often it does it. Uh, I encourage you to look through this at some of the stuff that it's actually doing because it's downloading, uh, you know, uh, all sorts of different databases and things like that in the background. Uh, let's move on to user configuration, right? That's where we were. We talked about that. Here is station identification, and this is where you get to put in all your station information. You've already done it, but that's where you get back to add or change it. Let's say you change your call sign. This is where you do it. Um, my references. So if 
I was, um, if I was going up and taking a laptop with this software on it, on my soda activations, which I don't do soda activations, but if I was, I could pull down and make all the settings for soda right here of where I'm at, right? That way it would automatically be in my log entries. Uh, and then I could upload it as an activator, okay? Uh, very handy uh, to do this. Or let's say that uh, uh, you're working towards a particular DXCC. Um, uh, you can configure all the information of the rewards that you're trying to go for. And this will reference that you are uh, going for these awards in your system, okay? Okay. Um, Station configuration. <clears throat> I actually have this configured on my main program, my real uh, install of this. And it's fairly, uh, fairly arbitrary. I would probably start off with my first radio, and we'll just call it uh, uh, FTDX3000. And I'd add it right there. And then, of course, under there, I can make uh, edits and changes, of course change the default uh, power setting for it right now it's set up as 100 watts uh, and I can add an antenna so we'll call this a dipole then under that antenna I can add bands so I can select all the bands that I use on this antenna and I can go down through it and then if I have a second antenna, I can go back to my radio up here, click on antenna, and I can stick in, uh, let's, we'll just say a CHA250B. Uh, I'll add that. And I can say, okay, well, that's what I, uh, that uh, on that, I can say, okay, the band that uh, I use on that is six meters. And if I have duplicates, I can, of course, toggle default on these, which turns them green, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Toggle default. There we are. Which turns them green as the default, right? And I can do the same thing here. Okay, so now I have all my default set. Why would I want to do this? I'm going to go ahead and save this and just show you. Now that I've done that, I now have the ability to do the pull down, changing this, my antenna, and my current power automatically. It will automatically populate those fields. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. All right. So we covered our station configuration. Now, we covered confirmations in another uh, video that I did uh, about setting up logbook uh, for old men to automatically downbook to logbook of the world, download to logbook of the world. So uh, I'm not going to go over this much in this video other than this is where you set uh, the default settings when you save the QSO, what they should be, uh, and then the auto uh, upload can look at those settings and make a determination whether or not to upload those to the services. Database, well, that's obvious. We created a new one when we first installed the program, but we can also add multiple databases or open additional databases. So you can have the same configuration and change your database if you wanted to. Um, external services, this is actually where we set up Logbook of the World earlier. Uh, you can set up for HAM, QTH, EQSL, uh, HRD log, club log, and QRZ if you're uh, a paid subscriber. User preferences. I actually fill a lot of this stuff out, preferred bands. And what I do is I typically will select the bands that I have antennas for uh, and just kind of put the markings on them here. And if I'm using different... Uh, Oh, uh, excuse me, if I'm using different radios for different bands, I can do that as well. 
And I typically don't use all of these crazy things. Uh, I uh, don't usually use uh, CW, but I mean, I use PSK31 and stuff like that. I use uh, uh, FSK Hell. I'll use JT uh, uh, or uh, FT8, which is in here, I believe. Yeah, there we go. There's FT4 and FT8. So I can select these, uh, and I actually uh, uh, only use the Soto reference, typically. And that's just the default reference to help me search uh, what bands that I'm using. Uh, this is where I can set the length of my grid square. I like a six character grid square. Um, now, I like to set my QSO start time uh, to start or be set when I hit uh, or when I hit tab to leave the call sign entry window because a lot of times if uh, there's a pile up, I might type the call sign in ahead of time so I have it in front of me. So when I'm talking to him, as soon as I get him, I'll hit tab to move to the next field, and that will set the start time of my QSO. And then when I'm done with the QSO, I'll hit enter, and uh, that'll complete the QSO and put it in the log. Uh, it doesn't get logged until you hit enter. Uh, anyway, let's keep going. Uh, this is where we can configure our cluster information. If you don't know what a cluster is, if you don't know what uh, uh, any of that stuff is, it's way beyond the scope of this particular video. Uh, I will, one of these days, do a video on using the DX clusters and spotting networks and stuff like that. But for uh, this video, let's just keep rolling on this one. I don't think there's anything that is... No, there really isn't anything giant here, and this is usually a page I don't touch. Info providers, we went over this in a previous video, how to set up for info providers to do auto lookups. Now, there's a second page of this called configuration, and I don't touch this typically. Um, most of what this is all about is getting uh, the uh, CW and... Uh, Oh, what's the other one? Uh, the ITU zone information. Um, and these are typically grabbed in this priority order. It explains how it does it. Uh, and then show profile image and main user interface. The only reason that you turn that off is if you've got low bandwidth. I have it on so when I um, type in a call sign before I hit tab or anything else, it'll do the lookup and it'll place the person's uh, photo up in the corner of my... Uh, um, log screen. Anyway, let's see. Uh, map settings. So the map is this booger right here, and I can change that um, to whatever I want. I kind of like this one personally, and if I save and apply, it'll change the map. See, I'm just it just changes the looks a little bit. All right, we were down in map settings. That's about all it does. You can upload a custom map if you want to for this as well. Um, and let's see. Backup. Um, this is going to automatically run backups, okay, uh, which is fine. Um, and this is just basically backups of your log that if something really gets corrupted, you've got five backup rotations and uh, however often it backs up. I leave this as the default. I actually back my computer up every night. So I'm, you know, I, I understand disaster recovery. This is a good feature. Um, however, I probably would be a little uncomfortable, um, you know, relying on it 100%. Um, let's see, VOC, uh, VOACAP propagation. I have this turned on, uh, and I really think that it has something mostly to do with the propagation page, uh, and, uh, that's a conversation for a whole nother video. This, this is such a robust program that, uh, I could sit for four hours and just show you features of it, okay? They've, they've done an amazing job with the software, and the fact that they're uh, giving it away for free just amazes me. But uh, 
I leave this turned on. That's the default. Uh, what do I want to auto start? Well, nothing. But let's say that I wanted it, oh, I don't know, to auto start FL Digi or WSJTX. I could go in here and configure it to auto start, right? Uh, I don't use that feature, but, uh, you know, play with it. It might be something that you like. It now, when I say it, log for all men, now has a built in chat feature. And that chat feature uh, is typically set on the default to auto start at chat, uh, auto start chat when you launch the program. Uh, I turn that off. I can always go up uh, to the menu under utilities and start chat if I want to play with chat. Uh, I kind of feel that when I'm on the radio, I'm on the radio. And if I want to talk to somebody, I'll talk to them on the radio. Uh, but that's just me. Um, anyway, your mileage may vary with the chat. It's the same chat that they have for uh, uh, some of the uh, more elaborate FT8 program add-ons. Uh, um, so your mileage may vary, but I think... You might want to try it. I don't know if you want to have it turn on every time you launch the program. So that's why I turn mine off. Now, under audio devices and voice gear, wow, could we ever get lost in this one? We could configure up uh, the radio microphone and the radio speaker so we could actually create files, audio files, to automatically send to the radio. This can be a bit complicated. You know, my uh, my advice on that is unless you really want to do it, I actually have a built-in uh, uh, module in my radio that will record my voice for, you know, short spurts. So if I'm calling, want to record a CQ, so I'm not saying it all the time, I can do that. Uh, but that's really the purpose of this is to be able to record different things and then play them back uh, typically with hotkeys. The CAD interface, we touched on this briefly in a previous video as well. Um, almost all the time, you can turn all of this stuff off. Um, that's typically what I do. Um, you know, but again, you know, uh, like I said, it, it may have a different reaction for you. You got to be careful with that. Um, I leave it typically, I tell it to auto start CAT and I point it towards Omni Ring. Um, you can enable or disable push to talk with the uh, backslash. That's completely up to you. Um, if you want to push the talk button on your keyboard, that'll work right there. You can change, you know, the color of the controls and the way the layout works out. I'm perfectly happy with the way it looks on screen most of the time, so I don't mess with that. But it's there if you want to mess with it. Now we're getting into software integration, and this is one of the... I'm going to say the most powerful tools in log for all men The reason I say that is in here, I can set up UDP inbound and UDP outbound connections using different types of service type in order to interface with different uh, programs, such as I can interface directly with N1MM. I can have log for old men running in the background and I can be running log for old men in a contest and every time I complete a QSO, log for old men will automatically write it up to log book of for, uh, uh, log book of the or excuse me log book for old men too. Why is that important? Well, if it's checking everything into this, if it's going to send that stream of that QSO over to this, and if this is going to log it, guess what? If I'm set to auto-upload to QRZ, if I'm set to auto-upload to Logbook of the World when I turn this program off, I don't have to worry about exporting my stuff out of N1MM or any other program that I have the capability to grab that. Uh, it has a couple different ways to do it, and the second way I'll talk about, and that's a really cool way to do it, and that's what I use to interface um, FL Digi and WSJTX, okay? Um, let's take a look. Uh, we can also, of course, hook our antenna rotor to this. Uh, I don't know enough about this to help you set it up or talk much about it, so we're going to pass it up for now. 
Uh, the ADIF functions, now, these are cool. Why? Well, guess what? I can set up an ADIF monitor and point it towards an ADIF file and tell it to upload QSOs to external services and uh, uh, all that good stuff. And I can point it to the ADIF log of WSJTX or, of course, FL Digi or any other software program that uses an ADIF format to store its logs. Or if I import an ADIF out of one of those programs, or export it, I mean, out of one of those programs to a set file and overwrite the file that's in there, it will go ahead and upload all that. So it's, it's, it's kind of neat. Um, anyway, it has a couple direct application hookups, uh, FL Digi. Um, FL Digi will only exchange band information and mode information through its interface. I typically don't turn it on. Uh, I use a different method of sharing that information and hooking FL Digi up because FL Digi does not support OmniRig. So I actually back end connect it through a different program. Um, and eventually we'll get to that information, but it's not going to fit in this video. Uh, and then, of course, WSJTX, well, you know, it talks directly to OmniRig, so I don't really have to have it talk directly. I can go ahead and just use the ADIF uh, export-import uh, tool up here. And this, in my, in my humble opinion, is probably one of the best interfaces I've seen for getting logging information out of other programs and into a central point. Now, again, I'm used to that. Now, whenever you make changes or whatever, make sure you hit save and apply. If you think you might have screwed up, hit exit and it doesn't modify the config, all right? And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Stu, AG6AG, and uh, have a great day today. Make some QSOs, will you? Wow. Talk about a dry subject, huh? Nothing like going through configuration menus on a piece of software to really excite you. <laughs> you know, I had to do this because there are so many different settings, and I get questions all the time from the other hams in my club about what to change and what to set. So I figured I'd share that all with you. Anyway, Hey, if you think about it, click the subscribe button if you haven't. Love to have you get notifications when we come out with new stuff. Uh, if you like the video, of course, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And any questions or comments you might have, go ahead and make them down in the bottom. Great to have you as part of my audience. This is Stu, AG6AG, seeing 73, and hope to hear you out there on the air.